I think everyone to an extent does have that imposter syndrome. Since posting my TikToks, I'll be invited to like, you know, different events, creator events. Mm -hmm. We we go and and in those rooms I feel like I definitely don't belong. Did you find it when you were on the loop? No, I actually found it in my bedroom and my initial reaction was to chase it. So I was like, I don't know how to get this scroll out. So I was chasing it before the video happened. I'm Katie J and welcome to Young Scott's new This Is How I Feel podcast, where we talk to guests who've grown up or live in Scotland about their experiences and how they cope in the world we find ourselves in today. In each episode, we'll tackle a different topic with a brand new guest. And today we are really looking forward to talking to Mark Thorburn all about imposter syndrome. Now, I think this is going to be a really interesting one. Uh, You might know Mark from his viral TikToks and the now famous phrase, (laughs) haha. Uh, for which, of course, he made merchandise last year, always capitalising on funny moments in our lives. Wow, incredible. He might be the last person you'd expect to be here talking about imposter syndrome, but that's what you're here for, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so, yeah. <laughs> so let's get into it. Nice one. There's loads and loads for us to talk about, Mark, but firstly, I'm going to start the way that we start every episode of This Is How I Feel by asking you how you're feeling today. Yeah, nice one. Um, I feel, I feel nervous. It's my first time on a podcast, um, and yeah, going to be talking about lots. But um, I think overall, I also feel grateful that I've been invited. Um, so um, you know, it's that way. A couple of years ago, I listened to a podcast. I don't listen to podcasts often, but I listened to one uh, on holiday, and um, the guest on there was speaking about imposter syndrome, and I was mm. like, oh interest and I've never heard of that before um, and that's very much where I learned about that and kind of understood a little bit more about me so yeah no I'm, I'm grateful to be on a on a podcast because I feel like there's a lot of things you can learn from a podcast and so to people to be in that position of allow listeners to hear a little bit about my story I think that's a cool thing so yeah I'm looking forward to it but overall I'm still nervous. But seriously was that a little bit of a light bulb moment for you then when you saw people talking about something that you couldn't really kind of quantify you weren't sure what it was but it was going on in your life? Yeah definitely and I think um, at that point um, in my life I was a little bit confused as to what I was doing Mm. do you know what I mean like and I think everyone experiences that and then to be able to um, give t- to almost define it in a way um, was quite exciting. I remember I was actually on a beach on holiday with my girlfriend, and I was like, "I'm listening to this podcast, and this guy's describing how I feel and how my mind works." Mm-hmm. And um, so, in a way, it was kind of exciting um, to be able to understand it a little bit more. Um, so, yeah. I think sometimes there's a kind of culture there where we're always like, oh, why are we always whacking labels on everything? Just let people live. But did you feel a real sense of comfort in that kind of almost being diagnosed by a podcast? Like, okay, well, I know now what it is and how to potentially help. 100%. I'm oddly obsessed with like personality quizzes. I'm like, I need to know. And it can be something like, we will tell you what kind of worker you are, mm. like how you fit in the workplace, or it could largely be what friends character are you. I was going like, to say, yeah. Yeah, the, Buzz, the daft, the BuzzFeed ones. What one are you? Um, I'm pretty sure I, they gave me the, the cafe waiter. Gunther. Like, what, Gun, is that his name? Gunther? I was like, what? I'm definitely a Joey. Yeah. I'm definitely Yeah, exactly. Are we back Chandler? <laughs> Yeah, I, so I know, so um, yeah, I got Gunther. Oh. Yeah, but then my pal said, they'll got Gunther. I'm thinking this was a prank. Yeah, it might be right. Somebody was at it. Might be right. Well, actually, I did the same test and I was obviously Rachel, so okay. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's do a deep dive, though, into a pocket history of you, Mark. Tell us a little bit about your life growing up in Scotland. Yeah, um, so I grew up in the sunny seaside town of Ayr. I think quite an just a standard life like I went to school um, I did random stuff with my pals yeah Yeah, um, and I loved air so much but it got to a point where I thought you know the the town's a little bit too too small for me Um, and I just felt like there was a full world out there so I moved out of air 45 minutes up to Glasgow um, (laughs) and (laughs) yeah I moved up for for uni um, and I really didn't know what I wanted to do. At one point, I was going to be a lawyer. Uh, imagine that. 
Strong flex. Yeah, there'd be no ha has in, 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 oh, in court, I don't no, think. No, 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 no. At no. um, one point, I wanted to be a primary school teacher. I mm-hmm. um, wanted to do lots. At one point, I wanted to, I went on a cruise when I was being, I was like, I want to work on a cruise ship. Fabulous. What, well, entertainment cool? staff? I have no idea. I'm right. just like. Anything for the holiday? Anything for the holiday. I Like, permanent holiday. Oh. Like, unreal. The dream and loads of pensioners. I love pensioners. Yeah, yeah, good chat, yeah. good stories. <laughs> yeah, it'd, it'd be like one big podcast. It'd be like, oh, that boy's a superstar That's every it. day. Oh, I'd get, they'd get, get so much praise. Oh, yeah. I'd be granny kissing the cheek every night mm. before bed. Oh, oh. tucking you in. <laughs> there we go, <laughs> love it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I want to do everything, but I think what I realised is I'm quite a creative person. Mm. Um, so those things probably uh, maybe weren't so much for me. So I went and studied marketing um, and there I kind of found a love for creating content mm. and just kind of filming bits and bobs and I'd always kind of been like that. So um, I'd make mainly just wee videos for myself or for my pals. Um, I used to have like a private Instagram that I would just have my close friends on and just put those little daft videos on there. Um and a lot of them took place in my workplace um, and I have since then decided to take them off the private Instagram and put them out into the world um, to see, just to see what kind of reaction I would get. I think it got to a point where I was a bit kind of like, I'm I'm bored of what's going on in my life right now. Let's mm-hmm. see if I can throw a little curveball. Um, and that's exactly what I ended up doing. Um, I put those TikToks out and they just blew up and now I can't walk down the street without ha-ha. getting ha had mm. so um, I've maybe ruined my life I've maybe made my life better who knows we're still figuring it out but um, yeah but at what point did you decide to take that bet on yourself and go do you know what like my pals all like this you know this is our sense of humour to a T there's got to be other people that will enjoy this yeah. content and, and make that leap from from a few people seeing it to putting it out there for the world yeah I think um I think I was just kind of like getting bored with certain aspects of my life like you know work life was maybe getting a bit boring and I thought I have all these projects I'd love to bring to life so mm-hmm. I've always wanted to release my own clothing brand I've always wanted to start my own podcast I've always wanted to start like maybe some sort of like big like put on some big event there's lots of things that um I would love to do and I just felt like I needed some people to look in my direction a little bit so mm-hmm. I could do them um and then I thought to what I'm going to put these videos out. It's been, um, I, I, I'm just going to put them out and see what happens. And people responded well to them. Some people didn't because they didn't understand what was going on because the videos are quite um, rogue, I suppose. <laughs> you know, they're quite like, they're not your standard viewing. Um, but yeah, no, uh, people responded well. And um, I think the funny thing about it is it's like patter from a while ago. It was like, it was, um, you know, last we were having a, a while ago and now they're popular on TikTok. If that yeah, makes sense, do you know yeah. what I mean? Because it's almost a past life for you now. It's a past life. Yeah. So yeah, like fun fact, um, the ha-ha patter was rife in my friend group back in 2020, I think. <sighs> and now we're in 2024. So my pals are raging because they go out with me and everybody's ha ha me. And they're like, that's old patter. That's old. <laughs> Stop <laughs> ha ha Yeah, Yeah, well, exactly. So they're a bit raging about it, but... Um, <laughs> Yeah, and I, but I think um, I think that's maybe why it resonates with people because I w- we weren't putting stuff out there to be funny. It was just generally mm-hmm. stuff that we found funny and we put it out and we had a laugh with it. And I think maybe that resonated with people. And I think also seeing the kind of like more fun, lighthearted, and real side to working in retail, I think probably resonated with a lot of people because m- most people have worked a retail job or hospitality mm-hmm. job, and you've got to get yourself through that day because it's not all it's not all laughs and fun. But I think it's what you make of it, and I think. A lot of people do make a good fun out of their jobs and being able to see that on TikTok kind of, uh, yeah, I think that probably resonated with a lot of people. Definitely. And what's brilliant as well is obviously you had all these big ambitions about the thing, the places that you saw your life going. But we've all been there where you're trying to work that out while doing something that you don't want to be a forever scenario. But weirdly, you working in Tesco ended up giving you that platform yeah. You utilise that moment where you were, I'm not sure I want to be doing this forever, but let's see what I can do with it. A hundred percent. Yeah, and I think that is always the approach I've taken to life. It's make the most out of the situation that you're in. Yeah. And my parents always taught me to be like that um, and always go above and beyond in, in what you do. And at one point, working in Tesco, 
going above and beyond was was working really hard to maybe climb the ladder but then I also just found another little opportunity and that was you know creating entertainment out of my job there um, and putting that out to the world so um, so yeah Decent advert for the shop as well Oh yeah, I think um, I think they're probably a bit fed up. <laughs> and they're all raging. Yeah, right. They're I, d- like, I didn't. Oh, we're working harder. What did your colleagues make of the whole thing? Like, see that Big Brother moment and things like that, yeah. where you're like, "This is their like your final call to get your booze," and and were they just going, "Oh gosh, that's Mark at it again?" Um, I th- I think in my head at least it was. Um, <laughs> It, they were laughing. They loved it. They loved it. They were clapping, <laughs> going, Another yes, one. more! <laughs> and I was like, fine. Um, I, think, I think ultimately they enjoyed it because when I worked there, I was what you'd call a shift leader, so I was running the shifts. And I think, um, you know, I always put a good shift in, like, as much as it looks like we're having a laugh, like, we, at the end of the night, like, all tasks were completed, but we all had such a good laugh while doing it. Yeah. Um, so I think, I think to be honest, when I first got the kind of manager role, I was like, I want to be the fun manager. That's what I want to be. Because I want to be, be the boring manager, or the yeah. grumpy manager. I want to be True. the fun manager. We all so, had one of them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, mm. Definitely. So, um, so I just wanted to be the fun manager. And then I thought, I'm going to film it for my pals. <laughs> Prove that I'm fun at work. See? Um, and then how's yeah. your nine to five? Look at me. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> hey, ha, ha. <laughs> was it an overnight success thing as well? Because people, I think, often look at TikTokers, and I don't want to say they do it in like a derogatory sense, but it's very much a case of like, ugh, you know, what what are they doing like that? You think that's a skill? You think that you know? But it's it's a lot of graft and a lot of yeah. effort that goes into creating content that does pop off. Although that being said, sometimes you can spend hours in a video and it'll not well, that's be the one. Uh, and there's so many videos I've spent so long on. Nobody cares. <gasps> but then there's videos that I'm like, I'm just put this daft thing up and uh-huh. people love it. So the, there really is no formula, I suppose. Um, I think what people enjoy is, at the end of the day, just kind of more like real raw content, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Because sometimes I'll make something that's a bit too produced. And I think people are like, what's this guy up to? Yeah. Like, just talk, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um so, so yeah. Of course, there's certain things you can predict, like a squirrel ending up in your loo. Yeah, so that yeah, because that 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 was the first one. I mean, that went viral actually, and I think because it's so ridiculous. Like, yeah. Yeah. Why, why is that squirrel in, in my toilet? Yeah. Get out. Now, did go you, home. Did you find? Did you find it when you were on the loo? No, I actually found it in my bedroom, and my initial reaction was to chase it because I was like, I don't know how to get this squirrel out. So I was chasing that before the video happened. <laughs> I'm chasing a squirrel about my gaff. Um, and it went to jump out the window and it decided it was going to use the toilet as a kind of like launching pad. The toilet was, lid was open, oh. straight in, and it was it was bad thing for that squirrel. Oh, um, and it was in there for a good half an hour. Oh, so. um, yeah, it was, but, but I, like as it was happening, I was like, I need to film this. But again, it was almost it's at a first, moral dilemma. A hundred percent. Like I was like, this needs to be documented. Like this doesn't happen usually. He's fighting for his life. A hundred percent. Oh, he was scrambling. I've never seen a squirrel scramble so much. Um, yeah, no, he was scrambling. But um, again, I filmed it more just for my mates to be like, look, there's a squirrel in my toilet. Mm. And then I was like, and then two weeks later, I posted it on TikTok, mm. and then um, back then it was only a squirrel boy. I was like, what's happening? Wow, it's me, squirrel boy. Uh huh. Um, also would like to note that the squirrel survived the, the squirrel ordeal survived and is yeah, living yeah. A, a happy life yeah yeah we keep in touch yeah uh, we, I grabbed his email before he left um, perfect yes yeah, squirrel662 at gmail.com perfect. if anybody wants to get in touch oh fantastic um, but yeah love it it's got a thriving nut business oh definitely um, so lots of things that maybe were unexpected have led you to where you are today yeah um, and it, it it's lovely to see you thriving and, and kind of making a start on all those big ambitions what are you doing now? What am I doing now? Because um, you're not so in Tesco anymore. I'm not in Tesco anymore, no. Yeah. So um, I work full-time as a content creator um, mm-hmm. in the hospitality sector. Um, so, yeah, making content, um, doing social media, just kind of what I'm good at. And then when I'm not doing that, I'm doing the exact same thing except in my personal life. So um, just kind of taking probably doing a little bit more of a caricature caricatured version of my life like yeah. we go out and about and I can't take see my viewers along on the ride um, if that makes sense um, 
So I, that's kind of what I'm doing now. Um, I'm just looking to kind of launch some cool projects. Yeah. So I did my clothing, um, which was just fun. So much fun to be able to do that. Um, next, I am launching my own podcast, yeah. um, which is also just a cool journey to be on. Um, and yeah, but yeah, I think my main focus is probably on balancing that like professional and personal life uh, because it's one way you don't know how long mm -hmm. the my tiktok could be thriving do you know what i mean it could it could disappear any second i think it's about being realistic and tiktok so quick and trends come and go um so i don't know how long i'll be on there it could be forever and it could be the next five days um so it's about just having that balance i think and being quite not getting, not letting the, the views kind of take you away, if that makes sense. But do you find yourself doing that? Because I know through my line of work, if we ever put up a, a video that does especially well, I torture myself watching who's who's viewed it, who's commenting, what's going yeah. through, which I don't suppose would help with the imposter syndrome stuff either if you become fixated on that have you like managed to strike a healthy balance there i think now i'm used to it but at first i had to read every single comment sure every comment and on every platform and because people were taking the video and i just had to know what they were saying just out of curiosity if anything mm -hmm. just i just need to know what everyone's thinking um so yeah it was probably a bit obsessive um at the start now like i will still check every couple of days what people are saying i don't need to read every comment because there's just so many comments out there and like they are usually the just thing is the videos are just so popular is what mark's trying to say basically it would be impossible to keep comments. tabs on all the fans uh, but no i think i like i think i'm just used used to it now um and you just can't live your life reading every single comment on mm -hmm. the internet and taking everybody's opinion into consideration because that puts your brain into overdrive and you start to miss the things that are around you if that makes sense like you those first couple done. of weeks i kind of don't really remember summer to be honest because i was reading comments uh -huh. do you know what i mean like yeah i remember my girlfriend was getting a wee bit annoyed being like right okay Put that one away. Yeah. And I turned off notifications. So I like, yeah, I'm definitely getting better. But at the time it was just so many opinions and from from all angles and yeah, yeah, it was it was overwhelming, but um it's also a real laugh. I was like, what's happening? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And and so many people do love the content you're putting out there, which is a wee boost for sure. And we spoke about that shift that you had where you took something that was, you know, for your close circle and put it out there. And kind of what you had to do to kind of psych yourself up for that one. And then again, you sort of mentioned there the fact that it is you, but it's a caricature of you. Is that intentional so you can separate Mark from Mark Haha? -ha? Um, <laughs> now, yeah. Obviously, when I made the Tesco videos, I wasn't expecting them to do what they're Pop doing off. today. So they, in a way, in a way, like it is me. But I mean, when we're doing the videos, like the one where I'm training... The new person is very much like, in my head, I was playing the role of an obnoxious manager who is looking over somebody's shoulder and micromanaging. Mm. So in my head, it's when when people do get raging at it, it's so easy to separate it because, like, it's, it's a bit. technically, not, it's a bit. Do yeah. I mean, ultimately, that video is a sketch. It's a comedy sketch. It just so happens it's in a real situation. I think sometimes the way I would describe the content is similar to, have you ever seen, like, Impractical Jokers? Mm -hmm. It's kind of a little bit like that. Like, it's we're interacting with real people. We're in real situations. But um, I'm very much playing a role. Yeah. The, like, the, the people in the content are very much playing the role of, like, like day's new employee yes the girl that i trained for example had trained me on the checkouts yeah. two years prior do what i mean so i think probably it is a fairly conscious decision now to um to be a bit of a caricature but then also i just think um a life's funny if you exaggerate it Absolutely. if that makes sense like nobody just wants to see me cutting about do you know what I mean? So it's like about trying to think about how to make things a little bit funnier or... Exaggerate. I mean, every single story I've ever told on the radio is exaggerated. Really? Yeah. Oh. Are you sure? Is this going to get cut out? Nah, but it's true because it's like, okay, that was funny. Yep. How do I make that a little bit more entertaining exactly. and take myself kind of 
and out of it and make it more elaborate, more ridiculous. Yeah. A better punchline. Well, that's right? it, and, and that's life. Like you want it's about it's it's about storytelling and how you tell that story and yeah, let's make things funnier and let's put on a bit of a silly voice when we're telling that story or, or yeah. whatever, but no, definitely. Just roll with it and have fun. Just roll with it and have fun. Let's move on to talk a little bit more in depth about imposter syndrome, which you only really came to when you were already going through it, like a lot of us are, yeah. um, and don't even realise what that feeling is, what that kind of voice in your head is all about. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about how it impacts you? On a daily basis, if it even does, you know. Yeah, uh, no, it impacts me probably every single day in a lot of situations. I always kind of have a feeling that even though I might be succeeding things, and my internal voice Hmm. doesn't feel that success, if that makes sense. Um, So I think a good way to define it is even though you are succeeding externally, you aren't succeeding internally if that makes sense um and there's always that to me it's very much like an inner voice going that wasn't good enough or you don't deserve this you don't deserve to be here um if that makes sense um in terms of like okay cool so the the role that i'm working in do i deserve to be in that role have i worked hard enough to be in it is there other people more deserving everyone here is better than me do they do they realize that like I'm not actually good. I feel like I'm very much pretending, if that makes sense. Uh-huh. Um, I think ultimately I just feel in some situations like an imposter. Like you do feel like you shouldn't be there. It feels like you've took the back door entrance somewhere and everyone's going to find out. You're a fraud. You're a fraud. Well, that's funny you mentioned that actually because we do actually have people here to come and tell you now. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> They're You're coming joking. to take you away. No, they don't. Take me. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually the squirrel and his pals. Um, but it is something that's very familiar to to me and, and to lots of people, I'm sure, in their respective fields. And it, it's such a difficult one to, to grapple with. Like, at what point do you, like, what do you do to keep those voices at bay to assert your, the fact that you deserve to be there yeah, in that room, which you uh, obviously, I'm telling you now, you obviously do. Yeah, no, 100%. Um, I think it's, I suppose it's similar to my content. I can almost separate the character I'm playing in that. With that voice, it's very much, I think it's about separating it from your actual inner monologue, if that makes sense. Um, And when you have those negative thoughts come in, trying to kind of keep them at bay. Or I think what I tend to do that works really well is I'm quite a competitive person. Mm-hmm. if I have that little voice at the back of my head going that's not good enough or you're not good at what you do I'm like cool well I'll prove you wrong I'm going to be better um, and that's really good for self improvement because that voice could go you're not good at this and it would be so easy to give up and go I'm not good at it and you're right and I'm going to stop Yeah. Um, but almost kind of challenging it and going, actually, no, I, like watch me, watch me, watch me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be better next time if that makes sense. Yeah. And I think also that's all fine and well saying that that sometimes not as easy, but also having a support network of of good people around you. So um, sometimes I'm like, oh, I don't like that voice is going. This isn't good, and I'm generally like. I think you're right. I don't think this is good. I think the work that I've just produced there is bad. But I think going to somebody that you trust, so like I'll use my girlfriend a lot, mm-hmm. is what, is this okay? Sounding and they bored. just give you that clarity you need and they're just like, and sometimes it's just simply, yeah, that's actually really good and that's all you need to hear. Mm-hmm. Or if it's in the workplace, um, about maybe speaking to your manager or, or somebody else that you kind of trust and going, okay, I've just produced this piece of work or I've done this task. Is it okay? Ask for feedback. And because quite often you're doing better than what you think you're doing. So getting that clarity from other people definitely helps. Yeah. And it's always better than just patching it and 100%. saying all that work that you put in. Because it might, you know, you could leave something on the cutting room floor in the context of a, a video and, and it end up being absolute gold dust. But because that voice in your head was telling you, you're not good enough today. Yep. No, 100%. Do you ever do that when you go through your drafts and you've not posted something? Well, that, that is pretty, a lot of my TikTok yeah. are drafts, do you know what I mean? So it was me sitting on things and then eventually going, what am I doing? Like, why am I not taking that step? And actually just 
being bold and of course it's that voice so it's not as easy as that but again I think I'm just in a place now as well where like having that good support network and really actually mm -hmm. taking the step to ask people for their opinion because that's something I've really struggled with too I have those thoughts and they were very much my thoughts and that was it if, if that's what I'm thinking mm. I'm right do you know what I mean yeah but actually taking that step back and going there's there's other people around you that have their own opinions too yeah. and just trusting in them but also yeah being bold enough to go I need I need help like have I done a good job here or I need help can you give me advice on this if that makes sense yeah. because yeah it just can completely change your perspective because that imposter syndrome can be overbearing and mm. it, it can take over we're talking about that competitive edge getting you through which I think is really relatable but also how do you quantify what's been a success because again that's where the part of my brain would go it's about the numbers it's about the views it's about this it's about that so if I put a a bit of content out there and it, in my view even though I thought it was good underperformed that could potentially set me back as a person do you do you kind of quantify it that way or is it more looking at the bigger picture now as you're progressing um I think I think it's important to look at the bigger picture I think if you look at everything into finer detail it can overtake yeah. I used to be such um, and I probably still very much am can be a perfectionist and I need something to be perfect otherwise it's not good but what that does is it just consumes you and it consumes your time as well. There's been jobs I've done in the past where like I maybe need to design something or write something and I spend so much time working on it being perfect that it ends up taking ages and then that becomes an issue in itself. Whereas actually if you just kind of take that trust in yourself, it works out better. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, I was thinking on the way here, a good way to put it is... Um, driving lessons the first time you get into a car and you have a shot at it mm -hmm. I'm assuming most people are like me and you, you, can't, you can hardly drive it you're not good at driving a car you've got lots gear sticks yeah lots of stalling yeah. <laughs> that voice in your head is most likely saying to yourself you can't drive you're not good and you could take that and you could go cool yeah no you're right i'm going i'm going to stop there's no point but the more you practice at it the better you get anyway so it's almost about proving that voice wrong and eventually you can drive and then that voice doesn't exist anymore because you prove you prove you proved it wrong yeah if that makes sense um whereas if you listen to that voice and went cool you're right i can't drive give it up then you can't drive so actually you've just validated that thought in your head and then when that thought comes into other avenues in your life, where well, you're going to validate it there too, if that makes sense, it's almost about training your mind to not take it too literally. Uh, because if you, I, I just feel like you could fall into a hole of listening to that voice too much. And that's, that's it. Like that becomes your inner monologue, if that makes sense. You'd never do anything. That's it. You wouldn't. Mm -hmm. Do you think people are shocked when they kind of would be listening to this and thinking, you know, this guy doesn't, that. this guy doesn't think like that. There's no yeah. way he's so confident. He's so like, like he's the life and soul loudest in the room. Like he's got thank it all you. going on, you know? But thank you. No, but no. Um, do, they shock, do you think people would be shocked to know that you do have thoughts like that, that you are a real person with thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think so. Yeah. And I think it is because I am very confident and even in situations where I'm not, I'm very good at presenting myself as being confident. Um, I mean, most of my viral videos are me in public settings. Yes. Being loud and, and doing things kind of out of the norm. Um, but I think everyone to an extent does have that imposter syndrome. Um, I don't know to what extent, but I know that minds can get really intense to the point that like it does hold me back from things. Like... Um, since posting my TikToks, I'll be invited to like, you know, different events, creator events. Mm -hmm. We we go and and in those rooms, I feel like I definitely don't belong there. Because I think a good way to put it is you, imposter syndrome makes you feel lucky when you do succeed. So my successes very much feel like luck. Um, so that viral video that I did, it just feels like luck that it, it popped off. But actually, I've got all these other videos behind it that I put a lot of work into. Um, and even just kind of like um, gaining the confidence to post it is, is working itself. 
Um, so yeah, a lot of these events, I'm like, I'm just a lucky guy. I feel like a lottery winner that I get to be like at these events, um, if that makes sense, or um, certain opportunities will, will come up and I'm, I'm asked to come along and do something and I'm like, surely there's somebody else out there more worthy to do it. And chances are there could be, but I think it's about taking pride in the fact that at the end of the day, you got asked, somebody wanted you to do that thing. Mm -hmm. So see that voice in the back of your head. Well, it doesn't actually matter because it has, it doesn't, it doesn't belong in this situation. It's you and the person that you're dealing with. They've they've asked you to come out and, and be involved in a certain project, or, or even if it's you go off for the job role, whatever it is. Um, yeah. It wasn't what, a typo in the email. It was for you. That, that there we go. Yeah. That's a good way to put it. It's yeah. it's for you. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing. But I totally get it as well. Like I'd be in that room going. I want a competition. Yeah. What's going on? I know. Um, I just sneaked in. So, do they know? <laughs> I think they know. <laughs> <laughs> but there's misconceptions, I suppose, at that bottom line, like that, you know, someone who is confident externally and who is doing this wouldn't wouldn't have it. Do you, any other common misconceptions when it comes to imposter syndrome that you can kind of pinpoint? Um, do you think it is that bravado thing? People think that if you're so confident walking if you if you've got that stage presence almost you must be fine yeah i think so i think um i, I just think like being probably loud and a bit wacky and confident yeah i think people just assume that you're doing absolutely fine but um ch chances are like everything as, as i said earlier everyone suffers with it and you will find if, if you do more research into it, like some of the biggest names on this planet will suffer from imposter yeah. syndrome. And I think sometimes as well, the, the I don't really get imposter syndrome when I go to the shops and do my weekly shop. You don't? I do. Do you? Uh-huh. Am I right in buying this eggs? Uh, I'm pretty sure I've got eggs in the house. What? Where's my mum? Why am I... <laughs> I'm not an adult. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, no. I see. <laughs> You've a lot... <laughs> True, true. Sorry, apologies for triggering you. <laughs> <laughs> I think for some people, um, imposter syndrome probably intensifies in situations that you actually are doing really well in. If that totally, makes sense, totally. Like, see if I would like see for like when you like look into it. I'm sure there is massive politicians. Um, you know, some of the biggest singers yeah. are suffering from it because. They're in such a unique position that, of course, you would be like, what am I doing? What's going on? And I think there's no rule book to refer to. Yeah. So it does just kind of feel like you're winging it constantly. And when's this all going to come crashing down? TikTok and, and, and videos and stuff is still quite new to yeah. everybody. And it's like, again, and it's so wonderful. We have people who have deviated from traditional careers and things like that. And it's only going to grow, in my opinion. Yeah. But I wonder whether there's a bit of a sense of you going like, am I a guinea pig in this scenario? Like, Yeah, no, <laughs> definitely. Um, because, yeah, there's no clear path. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think what most people want as human beings is a clear path. Right. They want a rule book. They want to know where they're headed. Um, and unfortunately, that's just not life and when you think that you're on a clear path something could come yeah. and throw a curveball and, and it happens um, so I think yeah in terms of TikTok and even my role like I work in social media mm -hmm. in the hospitality sector like that's not a role that's been about for that long in the grand scheme of planet earth do you know what I mean um, but now it's absolutely vital right and you manage 100%. to kind of hook on to that opportunity at the right time and now yeah. it's which which is kind of what I'm gathering from from your whole ethos is like constantly looking to build your skill set and work out where you can use all these you yeah. know amazing kind of skills that you've developed. A hundred percent. And going on to what I said as well, there's no clear path. Sometimes, mm -hmm. sometimes there's a couple of there's there's, there's many options yeah. for you to go down, and it's about not limiting yourself because that imposter syndrome can quite easy go can latch onto something and be like you're not good enough for anything else you just stick to what you're doing now if that makes sense um so it's about actually going well no there's a whole world out there mm -hmm. there's so many people to meet um i think that's a big thing that i did 
once I left school as I was very just curious of the world. Um, and I say that as if I went travelling. I didn't even, I just like... You did 45 minutes? Air yeah, that's true, that's true. You tell me you didn't have to get a bus for that? I, I don't know. I was travelling? Yeah, stopped at many stops. I was on that <laughs> bus a long time. Um, no, but um, I think it's about... I think for me, just being curi curious really helped. There was yeah. a point I was working like five jobs at once just because I wanted to meet as many people as I could and I wanted to try working different jobs to figure out where it was that I kind of slotted in. Um, if that makes sense just to society. Just learning about yourself and learning about learning. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's probably really good advice too. Um, I mean, we don't recommend you work five jobs at once, but um, it's good to try new things and meet new people because you learn so much from that and you learn different perspectives mm -hmm. and you learn new skills and you can transfer those skills into other things. Totally. So, yeah. And you never know when something that you learn along the way is going to become. That's it. Or someone that you met. Yeah. That's yeah. it, yeah. Because mm -hmm. um, me meeting people is such an important thing too because um, people come in, so, like, come in handy and they've got opportunities for you and do. then vice versa. Like... Um, yeah, you, d you don't know who you're going to meet along the way. Exactly. And, uh, yeah, no, it's exciting. I was going to say, get as many phone numbers as humanly possible. That's it. Um, we have been through a really bizarre few years. I mean, everybody kind of can relate to that scenario. The world stopped for five minutes, which felt like five years. Um, and I wonder whether in all that time you've learned something that you would maybe take back and tell a younger version of yourself. So let's get in a TARDIS for yep. a second okay. and go back Um uh, if you had any words of reassurance to kind of quiet that imposter syndrome in your teenage mind, yep. what would you say? Um, I would tell myself that you can't just automatically be good at something. You're going to be bad. <laughs> or not great. Let's get back in the car for that analogy, please. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> like when you start something, you're not going to be an expert in it. You're yeah. not going to be amazing. And that's absolutely fine so I think there was a point in my life where I would be too scared to try something because I wasn't going to be good at it and you can't live your life like that because not you might be naturally okay at something but you're only going to get better so let's say you're a good singer the first Thank thing you, you sing you're welcome I've heard <laughs> <laughs> um, the first time if you're if you're naturally a good singer the first yeah. time you sing is going to be nowhere near as good as your 10th thousandth time singing if that makes sense um, or similar to your first time riding a bike maybe you're actually okay at it but then after years of practice you're going to be able to do the tricks do you know what I mean you're not going to automatically be amazing um, at something or an expert um, and to become experienced in something you are going to have no experience in it mm -hmm. you can't get ex you can't be experienced without gaining experience you're not just automatically given that if that makes sense so I think I'd go back and, and tell myself to not be so hard on myself and that actually it's okay to to not be great at something to start with because you're gonna get there you'll be all right yeah and you're such a great example as well as you know you never know how those like, trying and maybe thinking that you failed but you, you tried it anyway ends up coming in, like coming up trumps in the later in life like you end up yeah. using those skills and if you had just walked away, what skills would you have? Well, that's it. And, and I think there's there's no harm in trying anything because see if it's not for you or see if you are bad at it or see if you keep practising and you maybe don't get to where you want to be. Um, there's so many other things out there. And that's what I discovered. There was things I was so bad at and I, was, oh, I thought I was really going to be good at that. But there's so many other things you can be out there doing. Um, and it goes for people too. There's so many people that you meet and you won't get on with. And that's okay because for that one person you don't get on with, there's going to be 10 other people that you're going to just click with, if yeah. that makes sense. So, yeah, I think negative experiences are okay um, because you learn from them and it's about what you take from them. Um, and ultimately, it's character building. Do you know I mean, it, that's what builds your resilience. And I've tried so many things that I have failed in that I feel like the resilience in me is so much stronger because, like, I've been there, done that, failed it, um, and I kind of have a clear path. Yeah. Back to a clear path. I have a clear path of where I'm kind of going now because mm -hmm. I've tried not at all. Not tried. Tr I've never been skiing. Everything. Oh, you should go skiing. Skiing's fun. Skiing seems fun. I'd love to try go skiing. Go down Brayhead. Apparently, it's closed. All right. Well, don't bother then. 
I don't know, region? Go to the Alps, fine. I you know, can fine. get a nice wee... Fine, Why don't you try and get a wee uh, hashtag gifted trip to ski slopes or something? Oh man, poor so syndrome's coming and going. You don't deserve that. There's a there's a skiing there's a skiing TikToker out there. Who deserves I would that love more. to see you skiing on TikTok. <laughs> Do what? We'll try and make it happen. Yeah. Like, open your head back up. Use it as a case study, right? To explore this whole thing. Okay, you'll start off on those skis. You might not be very good. That's it. You'll end up on a black run. Well, I've had fun. Have you had fun? I've had fun. This has been good. This has been good. Okay, um, well, I needed to hear that at the end of that conversation. So thank you for not validating my internal voice. Genuinely. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, and, and and I think as well before even coming here today, there's that voice in me going, "Who who am I to be here, and and talk about the things I'm talking like?" But I think you can take something away from anybody. And mm. yeah, okay, cool. I've had some viral TikToks, um, but um, I think coming on here and talking so openly. Um, I would hope that other people would be able to do that with each other because, mm -hmm. yeah, cool. I had a few viral TikToks and I've got imposter syndrome. Cool. But um, there'll be people around you that also have those same thoughts. So talk to your pal. If you're feeling them, like, talk talk to your pal. Um, talk to a family member. Talk to somebody at work. And, and don't let that negative thought take over. Well, a true testament to exactly where that can take you if you shut it down and, and just believe in yourself a wee bit. That's it. I have enjoyed this conversation so much. I think you're brilliant. And Thank I think there's you. loads of things that we can take away from here. So hopefully everybody listening will do just that. I hope so. Nice. Incredibly inspiring. Uh, you know, this conversation has been fantastic. So thank you to everyone who's tuned in for listening. Remember, if you need help or support with how you're feeling, Young Scott has tons of information for you at young.scott forward slash A-Y-E. That's I feel because we're Scottish. And you can follow Mark on Instagram and TikTok to follow his skiing exploits. Just search for Mark <laughs> underscore Thorburn to keep up to date with his latest antics. And don't forget, if you're under 26, then make sure you get your free Young Scott National Entitlement card with thousands of discounts, subsidised public transport and a whole lot more. You can also claim 100 Young Scott reward points for listening to this episode using the code IMPOSTER. So that's it from me. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of This Is How I Feel. And if you have, then please rate, review and subscribe to us, which means you'll get instant access as soon as the next episode drops. Looking forward to next time already. See you then. Thank you.